Good morning and welcome to St. Joseph's Redemptorist Monastery here in Dundalk. This morning I would like to share with you maybe a growing sense of frustration that I have and I'm, indeed I think is shared by many people as we continued with restricted movements and limited contact with our loved ones. Of course, digital media has been a great blessing in this time as it enables us to connect with each other and indeed perhaps make greater efforts with friends and family that we haven't spoken to for a long time and perhaps who are abroad. But deep down, I think that many of us really long for human face-to-face -face contact, and that's very understandable. This morning, I had a conversation with a mother who is deeply concerned about her teenage son and daughter. Social distancing and restricted access to friends is particularly difficult for, for young people, especially teenagers. With little prospects as we approach the summer for team sports or indeed the usual summer jobs, I could sense that mother's deep concern and indeed understand the frustration of her teenage son and daughter. As we also look around the world and we listen to the news, I also have a growing sense of a frustration and indeed maybe outrage this global pandemic, with all its implications, may have exposed a deeper frustration in our global family. The horrific death of George Floyd in Minnesota has awakened in young and old alike the destructive nature of inequality in all levels of society. Racism, sexism and the exploitation of the most weak and vulnerable are deep-seated realities right across our world and indeed here in our own country as well. Young people in particular understand the language of human rights and have taken to the streets right across the world, sending a very strong message that post-COVID, our world cannot return to business as usual. I think that this pandemic has shown us how equal we all are in the face of threat. The pandemic has also shown us, however, that it's the most vulnerable sections of, of our communities that have been hit disproportionately uh, by this pandemic. We think of old people or people of color and different races, people who live in precarious living situations, our refugees, our asylum seekers. Because of this inequality, we as Christians are called to really believe in the fundamental equality and dignity of all people before God. I think if we do not believe that, well, then the gospel has not penetrated our hearts. Charles Luanga is the patron of youth and Catholic action right across Africa. Because of his deep faith and his conviction in the dignity of human life, Charles and his friends gave their lives protecting vulnerable children who were in their care from the abuse and rape at the whim of a local leader. Refusing to submit to such a moral abuse, Charles and his companions were imprisoned and would later be burned to death. Like St. Charles, we too are called to protect the vulnerable and not to submit to injustice. A scribe asks Jesus from a very legal point of view, which is the greatest commandment? And of course, as we know, the answer is love of God and love of neighbor. But what is interesting before Jesus gives the answer, he says, listen, Israel. The scribe may have been trying to catch Jesus out, but through their respectful listening, both of them go away feeling respected and indeed in admiration of each other. In these frustrating times, as we negotiate the global restrictions and as we witness the deep-seated injustices in our world, may we also learn to stand up to immoral behaviour and injustice. And may we learn to listen deeply to the promptings of the Spirit in our world. To quote Pope St. John XXIII, to learn to listen to the signs of our times. And may we learn to listen deeply to each other, respecting difference and upholding the fundamental equality and dignity of all people. For this is what true religion is. Thank you.